Hey everybody, happy Friday and welcome to our weekly lunch chat. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you've had a week full of knitting. And if you didn't, I'm sorry. Hopefully if you didn't, you had a week full of thinking about knitting, right? Because if you can't actually be knitting, second best thing is to be thinking about it, I think. I mean, at least that's usually what's going on in my head. If I'm not actually doing the knitting, I'm thinking about the knitting. I'm thinking about what I'm gonna cast on next and what I'm gonna cast on before I finish this project that I need to finish and how many projects I still have that I need to finish. Oh, oh hey, on that note, that reminds me, we're thinking about launching a fun new endeavor for Thursdays and you can participate here in the store. You can also just participate wherever you happen to be on a Thursday. And it's a uh, takeoff of the Throwback Thursday idea. And what, would, what it is is basically Thursdays are for knitting the old stuff, the stuff that needs to get finished, the stuff that's been lingering on the needles for too long. In the spirit of our 2020 challenge, um, I'll talk about that more in a second, um, you can finish up old projects. They just have to be finished in 2020 to count for the challenge. And so that's got a lot of us thinking about how many things we have on the needles and how nice it would be if we could clear some of those up. So uh, Throwback Thursdays, come sit with us in the shop and bring those oldies and goodies or participate virtually and let us know what you're working on that you need to get off the needles. I'm trying to think offhand what my oldest project on the needles is. Um, there's definitely a sock that was started about 10 years ago. There is a blanket also started 10 years ago. It's the great American Afghan. I thought that I was, you know, gung ho to knit that. Um, okay. My mom's watching this. She's in the middle of the Caribbean in this beautiful location, like St. Lucia or something like that. And you're watching this. I mean, come on. You're crazy. Hey, Sarah. Um, yeah, so anyways, I've got some really old whips on the needles and Jill is the one who came up with this idea that we make Thursdays for throwback projects and I'm on board. I think it's gonna feel really good to clear some of that up, give myself a little pat on the back, add a finished project to my challenge numbers. So yeah, I encourage you to do the same. So uh, let's see what's new this week. Um, one thing that's new is the forecast. Winter's going to finally show up. Uh, if you leave here in, live here in the Pacific Northwest, then you've probably been hearing all about it. But we're in for a big Arctic blast this next week, and that's going to include um, close to zero and teen temperatures, as well as some snow and maybe some ice. And so um, you know what that sounds like to me, right? That's a knitting forecast right there. You got snow in the forecast, you got cold temperatures, no reason to leave the house, stock up now, pile wool all around you, and knit as long as you can until you either need food or you need to use the bathroom. Um, so that's what I'm planning for next week. So come on in. We still have a lot of great stuff on our semi-annual clearance sale. In fact, we just added Kelborn, I mean, excuse me, Fiber Company's um, Road to China Light to the sale. So. Um, grab some wool, get ready, Arctic Blast 2020. So anyway, hey, guess who just popped on the video, guys? Our newest employee. Hi, Julia. So I am so excited to tell you guys that we have added two team members here at Team Not Another Hat, who, which we like to call ourselves Team Awesome, um, Julia Norman and Jan Callow. And you've, I'm sure, seen both of their faces around the shop if you're a local. Jan's one of our teachers. Um, Julia has been part of our core regular team, our group since um, nearly the beginning. So we could not be happier to have these two joining us. You'll see them. Um, flipping around on Saturdays and then filling in on other days during the week when needed. So um, our team is growing. It's so exciting. And they are just the most capable, competent people. You are in great hands with them if you need some help. So everybody say welcome, Julia, and welcome, Jan. Jan's not watching the video because she's right on the other side of the store teaching a mitten class right now. <laughs> so that's exciting, too. Um, I have something here over my shoulder that I wanted to show you guys. This is a first peek at the 2020 Pacific Northwest Slow Yarn Crawl um, exclusive pattern from our shop. So this is uh, the Gina Poncho. 
and it's got a nice all over texture here with a cable border super easy it's one of those cool rectangles that you uh strategically seam to make it fit really nice i used um ultra alpaca from barocco so it took four skeins of that 50 percent wool 50 percent alpaca and everyone's been trying it on this morning in afghan class and they're all wanting one for themselves it looks great on everybody it's really perfect um this is called Gina because uh, one of our great customers, Gina, had a commercial poncho that was similar and I was completely inspired by that and we all thought, okay, we need a knitting pattern for this poncho and so Gina was born. So the way to get this pattern is to join the Pacific Northwest Slow Crawl this year and um, even if you don't think that you're, you know, that you're going to be able to get around to visit 20-something shops um, in Oregon and Washington, the cost of the passport is ten dollars uh i'm pretty sure it could be 15 but i think it's ten dollars and at my shop alone you'll get this pattern and the one i'm about to show you which is a crochet pattern so that's two patterns already for your ten dollars and you get those patterns you get a, an exclusive pattern for both knit and crochet at every shop you visit so even if you only manage to visit one other shop that's four patterns for your ten dollars it's a totally great value totally worth it and it just makes it fun if you happen to travel somewhere and you pop into a participating shop get your passport stamped you get entered in prizes um we do three prizes here in our um drawing so anyone who visits us during the crawl gets entered into the drawing we do a 25 dollars gift card 50 dollars gift card and a complete prize basket then there's regional prize baskets there's grand prize baskets it's it's a ton of fun so i strongly encourage everyone to buy up a passport when they become available later this spring and that'll get you gina and the next pattern i'm about to tell you um or show you which i am going to ask for your help so here's my crochet pattern for the slow crawl it's this hat right here and I used um, Feeder Brook Farms Entropy Bulky for the main color. So that's all of this color right here and right here. That's just one yarn. I'm going to show you a skein. It's a different colorway, but this is what that yarn looks like. Isn't that pretty? It's a bulky weight, 100% um, blue face Lester wool, and it does this nice striping thing. And then I've got a little bit of a stripe motif and a special stitch pattern right here that you can see, and I did that in Barocco Mercado. So Barocco's getting all my love for my slow crawl patterns this year. Um, and so what I need your help with, everybody, is a name. What should we name this little hat? So if you have any ideas, Pop them in the comments, send me an email. Um, I gotta send these away to get photographed for the slow crawl, but I don't have to um, finesse the pattern yet for a few more weeks, and so I've got a couple of weeks to come up with a name. So if you got an idea for this cute little hat, um, send it to me. So, okay, Jess, what are y'all doing that you guys are watching this video while you're in the beautiful Caribbean? Um, now my uncle's chimed in, he's with my mom along with my aunt and my dad um so let's see what else have i been working on oh you know today's afghan day so i'll give you guys a quick peek at what we're doing in our afghan club you may remember that um that in that started up in june and then we had a second round start up this fall in october november so here's the square i finished for this today's class isn't that cool look at all those baubles everybody says they look like cherries mom my parents are cherry growers so this was the square today. It's super fun. And here's the square I'm working on for next month. I mean, cable-licious, you guys, right? It is so fun. You get to try all these cool cables, but in a 12 by 12 size that's totally finishable. And guess what? Every single square counts in your 2020 project challenge. That's right. Each square is its own project. I mean, it takes four to six hours to knit these things. It's totally the same amount of time it would take to knit a basic beanie, so it should count. Um, so if you're participating in our challenge, those squares totally count. Um, on that note, let me talk about the challenge really quick for anybody that hasn't heard. Um, Ravelry has a little cool thing uh, on your project page where you can set a challenge for yourself to complete a number of projects during the year. You pick the number, just realistic for you. It doesn't have to be a competition with anybody else. How many you would like to complete? 
And then as you complete projects and you put them, you know, mark them completed in your Ravelry, it adds to your total and tells you how your progress is doing. So we thought here at Not Another Hat, it would be fun to keep track of that with you and encourage everybody throughout the year and have a place that we could get together and cheer for each other. So we are creating the Not Another Hat Ravelry Challenge. So if you want to participate, all you need to do is send me your Ravelry name and how many projects you've picked with your email and then we're creating a list and we'll send you emails throughout the year to give you a little nudge of encouragement and we've also got a Facebook group just for everybody participating in the challenge where we can share progress on projects um, commiserate about the slow <laughs> progress that we're might you know might be making etc and just basically stay in touch and talk about our progress on our our projects throughout the year so it's really fun there's nothing required to participate other than sending me your your goal and your revelry name before the end of January so I hope everybody wants to jump in on that because it's really fun. Um, the other thing that I have finally started working on is my boathouse. Um, that's Marie Green's current workshop knit along, the boathouse pullover. And I was a little late to the game um, and so were some of my customers because our yarn was a little bit late in getting here. But I am making up for lost time and I'm getting started. So I'm going to show you my boathouse. I got to the color work last night. Let's see. Oh, uh, let me take my needle keeper off because that'll help. There we go. I can spread it out a little bit better there. Here we are. I've just hit my first round of buoys. I'll flip her this way. That's that's how it would look. There's the neckline. So I've got my first round of color or first set of color work there. That chart, that uh, little chart. I'm about to pop this color in, and then I get to put my purples in. So here's my general color scheme kind of give you an idea. Uh, it's so much fun. Um, anything with a chart with color work is fun. I mean, just wanting to see row by row what comes next makes it exciting. So um, we've got quite a few people working on this. They're sitting out there right now working on them. And I love seeing all of the different colors that everybody has picked for their sweaters. And of course, in Marie's Knit Camp, um, group on Facebook, everybody's sharing their pictures there as well. And there, I mean, as many people in the world as there are, you can think of as many different combinations of colors there could be. So it is wide and varied. And I just love getting to see all of the different um, cool options that people have chosen. They've done a dark background or they've done a, um, you know, totally switched it up and they're only using a couple colors instead of six colors or who knows all the different options, but um, it's really fun. And we're having a good time working on that. So um, I'm going to sign off now, a bit of a short talk today, but I just want to make one quick reminder to everybody, uh, the 18th, eight days away, it's gumball sale time. So our biggest sale of the year, you spin for a gumball and get your discount anywhere from 15% off up to 100% off. And that's right. There is 100% gumballs in that machine. So every year somebody gets it. Um, will it be you? Hmm? Uh, I, if you can't participate here in the store, you absolutely can do it online. How it works is you place your order, we pull the order off the shelf for you, one of the staff takes a turn at the gumball machine, pulls out a discount, and then we refund the amount of the discount back to you. So totally doable to do if you're not going to be in town that day or if you're just one of our long distance regulars. We hope that you participate. We have so much fun on gumball day because spirits are high plus watching someone pull out a hundred percent gumball even a 25 or a 50 percent gumball they're just so excited it just it's contagious it makes us really happy so i hope that you all have a great weekend um i hope that you have the perfect combination of wintry knitting weather that doesn't leave you housebound and unable to get groceries how's that all right everybody take care happy knitting and we'll see you next week